WFT 90.1 FM, so glad that you could join us on this Sunday morning, coming to you at this time, praying um, that you were, have the opportunity to turn your clocks back, not the same, not forward, but have the opportunity to turn your clocks back, because there's people still right now thinking that it is 10.22, it is 9.22, 22 minutes past the hour of nine. God bless you on this morning. Again, there's a lot of things that have been taking place going on around this country and around the world. And our prayers are for everyone. Our prayers are for everyone. We're not excluding anyone, but our prayers are for you, your loved ones, your family, your friends, and even those that are streaming, listening live right now. We have people listening live right now in other states, <coughs> other, other cities, other countries, streaming live online at weft.org. Our telephone number is 217-359-9338. Let me say that again, unless you um, didn't catch it. It's 217-359-9338. That is our phone lines. Um, we have a lot of guests with us on today, and I'm so happy that they took time out of their um, schedules. They sacrificed the time to come and share with us on today on some very relevant, important information to educate, to inform, to, um, to give you strength, to give you support, and also to make it, to raise your consciousness. Um, that's what we're here for with this platform, is to be able to share, to encourage, to bring awareness, consciousness, and to let you know of those subject matters that are relative, as well as deal with the elephants. I made that, not singular, but plural, that are in the room. A lot of times people try to stray away from the elephants that are in the room. But those are the most important things that we have to deal with the roots, deal with situations that are affecting people, that people are going through or dealing with, that seems like it doesn't get talked about, doesn't get shared enough. Maybe it does get talked about, but not talked about enough. So we want to make sure that we cover those premises, cover those bases. And that's what we try to do. That's our objective is to do cover those premises um, and those objectives that we have set out to do. Um, lately, we have been dealing with the color of compromise. The color of compromise and the color of greed and dealing with a lot of social injustice um, situations that have been taking place, um, dealing with equality, dealing with um, housing, employment, unemployment, um, um, health, health care, getting um, adequate health care, all of that. We've been covering those bases. We'll continue to keep doing that due to we've been having a lot of comments from individuals um, and from the community, from the city, and those that are listening in other cities that shared how much they have really been blessed, not only by our subject matters, but by our guests too as well. God has blessed us to have some very significant guests on this show, and um, ones that have been well known around the country, um, that have worked in very prominent positions, and we've been blessed to have those individuals on our show as guests, and we will continue to do that like we are today. We have some very... Um, distinguished guest with us on today, and I can't wait to get into the matter work, the subject matters that we're going to talk about today. Um, you guys, are you ready to go to work? Yes. Are we ready to go to work? Well, let's go to work. Let's get to work. Again, our phone lines are 217-359-933. We want you to join in on this conversation on this morning as we dialogue and dissect as many levels to our subject matter on today. We're going to try to get into it as much as we can. Um, Go, we will, first of all, let's introduce ourselves on this morning, starting off with you, sir. Uh, my name is Officer Simakaya, and I'm Officer Gabriel with Israel United in Christ. Officer Hosea, Israel United in Christ. Soldier Judah, Israel United in Christ. Soldier Eleazar, Israel United in Christ. And my brother who's doing, um, who's recording. He's the, the cameraman, he's, he's, he's making the things happen in front of the curtains, and um, his name is, one of y'all want to go ahead and share his name? Soja Cola. Soja Cola. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we also have with us... Uh, my name is Michael Hill, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Mikael. Uh, I'm also an air <coughs> shifter here at uh, 90.1 WFT, the third Saturday of each uh, month I do Inside Europe. Uh, I was one of the, um, uh, I was the person that uh, thought we should 
Well, the court with Mr. Jones here that we should have a discussion about Islam and also maybe uh, uh, Christianity. So, uh, it, so I, hopefully we can get some some information out of this, especially uh, we still know that there's a lot of misconceptions about Islam and a lot of things people don't know. And uh, I don't think we're going to cover everything <laughs> today. And I was just asking Mr. Jones here uh, that hopefully we can have some other uh, discussions on, on this radio show uh, pertaining to uh, religion that is Islam and Christianity. And you know, uh, maybe uh, other things can come out of this where you know, uh, this, can, this discussion can be talked. You know. Introduce your friend. Have your friend. Oh, yeah. it. And we also <coughs> on, um, on the line is uh, <coughs> Brian Horton. He's a friend uh, who also is a now Muslim. Now introduce himself. And uh, Brian, can you introduce yourself? In Arabic, called the Lakhab is uh, Lakhab is a safe thing, which means the sword of the faith. Um, I currently live in Atlanta. Mike and I, well, I go back 20 plus years now, to believe, and uh, <laughs> telling our age a little bit. But <laughs> but uh, I currently live outside of Atlanta right now, and I run an organization named Al Fahim Charitable and Educational Foundation. So and Michael asked me, he called me and told me about this discussion. And the original topic point uh, really ties to me personally and my own my own uh, journey of life so far. Can you, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the organization that you uh, uh, have started? Uh, Al Fahim is is is, is, a, is a, it's an Arabic word. It means the understanding, right? And the point of it is to a provide charity to people in need. Which, of course, in our current times, the COVID problem and just generally with African Americans, uh, need uh, charitable needs and foundations are always useful. And also to educate people primarily in the foundations and critical information related to Islam. So, and we, we actually work out of Chattanooga, you know, I live near Atlanta. Okay. And I'll, now, to my brothers, go ahead and share about your organization. <coughs> We're the organization with Israel United in Christ, which is founded by Bishop Nathaniel in 2003. Uh, the goal of our organization is to change the hearts and minds of our people, because as we all know, our people go through various hardships, poverty, being, dealing with issues such as being gunned down in the streets, tr being strung out on drugs, various things like that. And what our aim and goal is, is that the blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel and the disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, and economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us, Christian churches have failed us, and it's time for a change. In these last days, we must give the Bible's medicine to sick people then and only then will things begin to change. Okay, any other you want to share? Um, you same organization, so. The <laughs> uh, only thing I could really add to that uh, wonderful message that the officer did was that us, we are a Chicago chapter. So our mission, our mission is to reach the diaspora. The diaspora of the scattered black race that is known as the Israelites, but in these last days is known as the diaspora. We are going to reach our people, no matter where they are, and teach them this glorious gospel. And we must wake up. Time is very short. Time is very short. Every kingdom that rose, that rose up fell. Egypt ruled the world. Where are they today? Greece ruled the world. Where are they today? Rome ruled the world, and America is an extension of Rome, but ancient Rome fell. Every kingdom and every empire will fall, including this. The Arabs, they ruled, they fell. Everybody who rules is going to fall including America, so time is very short. And guess who's next? The black man is. The Israelites, we're gonna rule in this, this world next. So before we rule, they must hear this message. All right? Um, 
<clears throat> I got to get th get this out. The views and opinion opinions expressed on the air are solely those of the speaker and do not necessarily represent those of WEFT Champaign, Perrier Inc., Station Management, the Board of Directors, or the WEFT Associates. And then also, let me get this out too as well. We can agree to disagree. And we can agree to understand that we may not think alike. We may not feel alike on certain um, subject matters or, or beliefs or opinions. Um, but we can. there are common things that we do, common um, similarities that we do have in common as human beings. We do have common things that we do um, deal with. Um, that we as a people, um, not necessarily race, but as people that we have, have to deal with, that we go through. Um, and we're going to share about that a little bit later on. But the, the first hour, we're going to get into um, my brother, you initiated and this conversation that sparked interest mm -hmm. on having a, th this kind of dialogue and sharing mm -hmm. and talking concerning um, some of the things that you've heard a few Sundays ago that you took not only the time to call but to come down and share and to elaborate. And even we spent another hour after we got off the air to talk about certain situations. Um, but certain things that you brought up, and we're going to get into this, my brothers. We're going to get into this. Your organization again. Is Israel United in Christ. Uh, Israel United, but um, soldiers. I'm going to call my soldiers, my brothers, my soldiers, um, God's soldiers. We're going to get into this. Um, I'm not for sure if you knew about this this conversation that took place a couple of Sundays ago. I'm not for sure if my brother had shared. Maybe he did share. But you had brought up the interest. Um, and maybe you at the same time can kind of share on his same sentiments about is there a God? Mm -hmm. Does God exist? And if God exists... He only exists in time. He only exists in space. He's not right. omniscient and he's not omnipresent. Is that correct? Uh, <coughs> no. <coughs> no. What I was, what I was saying, I was rebuting. Uh, you know, there's some uh, Christians who say that Jesus is God. So, one of the things I said last week is that. Well, two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago. <laughs> well, that, you know, uh, God himself is not part of his creation. So we believe that he's not part of space and time. We believe that he's above space and time. He's, he's, not, he's not part of his creation. He's he not. rules over his throne. Uh, you know, according to Islam, according to Islam, he's not part of space and time. He's not part of his creation. You know, we have okay. a lot of people who say that, well, God is everywhere. Well, Islam says, no, he's not everywhere. He just exists. He's not. When you make a statement like that, you're saying that he's part of his, his creation, a human being. He is not, he has, he is not manifested, manifested in human beings. He's not manifested in wood. He's not manifested in grass. No, he is separate from his creation. He's not part of his creation. And that's what... Islam, Islam. Uh, 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 is well. I say people who are Muslim believes. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> did you want to share? Also, my brother, you share with your. Does he also want to share on that? Oh, oh, siphoning. Do you? Uh, do you, would you like to expound on that if you could? Oh, he got to put the speaker, uh, the, the mic on. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I would. Um, firstly, let me start with. In the name of God, in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most beneficent. And ask Allah to place his blessings and his peace upon our noble prophet, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. <clears throat> but uh, Michael touched on the key things, but to, to expand it, to, to refine the discussion. The Islamic belief is that Allah, who we call Allah, uh, created time and space. That these... He, we have a saying in Arabic in the Quran, Allah says, Laysa commitment to be shaped. And this means uh, he is not like the like of his creation. So God is calling us in this statement of saying that he's so different from his creation that even if you could create something to mimic him, it would be not like the creation. That's how different he is from his creation. Yet when people say that he's everywhere, what they're actually feeling 
is his power and his knowledge, which touches all of creation in, in, in a metaphorical sense. That he's, He also mentions he's closer to us than our own juggler veins, but this is through his power and his knowledge. He's not physical, it doesn't even apply to him. You know, so he's endless and beginningless, and this, this kind, of, kind of takes to us that he's beyond our understanding. That my teachers tell us when you understand that you cannot understand him, you finally understood. <laughs> Brother Savadin, hello? Are you there, bro? Yeah, can you, can, you, you can hear you. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, you can hear me. I need to hear the phone. Brother, my brother's that's here, uh, representing the I, how you see. Could y'all kind of like, speak, we're going to try to bring out some scripture that's going to, um, and some, 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 some uh, precept that's going to support what they, what they views are. And I, I, would, I would like to encourage you, bro, to do the same. Uh, whatever sources that you have, um, to prove what your point is. Um, to bring it out. Yes, sir. Actually. Start with you, brother. Go ahead. With, uh, uh, what you got for? Uh, Can you repeat the question? Um, also, for John. Yeah. yeah. So, your stance is that uh, blacks and Hispanics are the uh, descendants of no, the No, his, his question. His question. Oh. Is, his their statement is that God does not. God is above creation. God does not exist in his creation. He is a part, separate from his creation. Am I correct? Yeah, that's yeah. part of the creation. He he say that again? I would say that again? He's not intertwined with his creation at a physical level. When people feel God, they feel his knowledge and his and his power, his decree. Right? But he He's beginningless, and the creation had a beginning. And he's endless, and his creation may have an end. So he can't be part of the creation. Again, bro, uh, what is your sources for, for what you stand on with that? I'm sorry. And the teachings of our prophet. You give us the scriptures? Okay, I'll read to verse one. Okay, this is the old, it means there is nothing like the like of him. All right, meaning that in no form is there anything in any way like a law. Right, so therefore, that in itself states that not only is he, he's not outside of the creation in another physical realm. The creation, as we know it, has no, it's all the laws of creation have no application to him. He's quite beyond our understanding. We can only understand what he told us of himself. Okay, so you, you both want to respond with that? Yeah, let us go. Um, get uh, Genesis 1 Genesis chapter 1 Hold that what you got <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1 The book of Genesis chapter 1 And verse 26 And God said Let us make man in our image After our likeness And let them have dominion Over the fish of the sea And over the fowl of the air And over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So it says that God made us in his image. So we made he made us in his image. We look just like God. God looked just like us. He has a physical body. Because that's what the scripture is saying. That's what the scripture is saying. The script he said he was made in, let us make man. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me online? Mm -hmm. It says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. When you, when you, what is an image? What is the likeness of something? Like, I have children. My son is after my likeness. He looks like me. So, if you think he wants to re rebut that, can you, get, uh, can you turn his mic on? Yeah, so one second. Oh, one second. Wait, wait, one oh, second. Okay. Can you we still y'all a, nice, yeah. a nice little amount, amount of time to state y'all case? So, do you have anything to share? And not only is we created in his image, but he exists in us. That God exists in us. Mm -hmm. Go on now. Okay. You get, get what you got. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon. This is the out of the book of the Apocrypha, which was taken out of the Bible in the 1700s, in the late 1700s. Let's read that. 
by the Protestant wisdom, church. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 and verse 1. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. So the Bible tells us that the incorruptible spirit of the Most High God is, is in all things. That's what mm. that's out of the Bible, out of his holy word. Now Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. And verse 18. The book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth. In unrighteousness. Read. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. So they said the, that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. So next verse going to explain what it's saying. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. So are, the invisible things of him, which is talking about the most high God, from the creation. Read. Of the world are clearly seen. Are clearly seen. The things that he made, we can clearly see that the most high, we know that he is. We know that he is the creator. He is above all things. And he created all things. And we can, he's evident in the things that he's created. Read. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You cannot deny that God is, is he is in everything and just like we read in the other scripture it says it's invisible it's incorruptible spirit is in all things and that's what the Bible tells us so he is in all things because he created all things I'd like to say something uh, before Sarkadim says you know could he, he uh, uh, what's your name again? Simakaya. Simakaya. you go on and say that he's spirit right God is a spirit Yes. Right. Okay. That goes back on to what I was saying. We as Muslims, we don't believe he's a spirit, meaning he can move about. You know, uh, to go on and say that he's a spirit, you know, it's it's it, it's not real. He's not a spirit. We can't imagine what he Excuse is. Me. Why would someone Excuse try to imagine what he is? You know, why would someone try to imagine what he is? He's He's above all creation. We cannot have even phantom what his power is. We can't find. We're just going by what he tells us in the scriptures. You know, in the Quran, it, 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 it explains that. He's not part of space and time. Why? You know, and then he goes on and says that he manifests himself. No, according to the, uh, the Holy Quran, he blew something of his spirit into mankind. It wasn't his. It was his essence of his spirit. He's not part. He's he is not part of his of his creation. One, man has a free will to do what is righteous and what is 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 wrong. You know, he gives them that free will. Well, if he if that was so, if he's in us, he's manifest in us. Well, all, you know, and and all that child, all we want to do is what is righteous. No, he gives man free will. You know, he doesn't he doesn't manifest himself. He just creates. And uh, I'm gonna let uh, Cypher Dean uh, expound on that. And to uh, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, uh, brother Cypher Dean. And brother, you, I, I was trying to talk to you earlier too. I was able to meet with the brothers earlier, and we had agreed. Remember, I asked you if we were gonna hold any questions. This is not gonna be a, a debate. We we agreed that it was gonna be more of a forum. So we're gonna save the questions and the comments uh, for the callers. And mm -hmm. then I mean, whatever stands that you have, you can bring your your sources, uh, your brother too. But this is not gonna be a debate right now. We're gonna have just, you know, okay. a form, if you right. may. So. And then also we want to get some of these other brothers to share too as well. Because I, I know you're doing some videotaping, but I want to hear your comments. I have my brother just, just showed up that was been in for the last couple of Sundays. He's standing. I want to hear him and I want to get a chance to hear you too as well. We want to try to cover everybody and get everybody's sentiments and mm -hmm. how they feel on this kind of, because we still have other subject matters to talk about. I know we're right now we're just dealing with God and His image and Him being the, His existence in human beings. But there's other points and principles that Islam and things that they that they point out. And when they having a conversation concerning this, there's some three there's three basic principle foundations that they stand on. 
We're done with one. There's two other ones. They're just even as important. But um, go ahead. If I may. <clears throat> if I may. Because well, can we all, so we just read we were made and, and we all are made in the image of God. Correct. Mm -hmm. Out of the Bible. Out of Genesis. We're made in his image. If you, if anybody here has, you got children? Mm -hmm. You got children? Yes, I have. When you had children, your children come out looking like you. We made in his image after his likeness. We have a spirit, right? So he's black, he's white, he's Japanese, so, so he's, that's, that's his image. Genesis, I mean, Exodus, Exodus. 15 and <clears throat> first. The book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. Because we, we don't want you to hear, we don't want you to just take heed to what we're saying out of our mouth. We're going to read the Bible, see what the Bible yeah. says. Read. Verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. So the Lord is a man of war. He's a man. We were made in his image, Daniel 7 and 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So the Ancient of Days. My brother said it, that God was before his creation, and he's going to be after his creation. Mm -hmm. The Ancient of Days. That's talking about the Most High God. Read. Wait, Who, wait, read it again from the top, though. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days, talking about the Most High God, it says he sat. He sat. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. And his garment was white as snow. So he sat so, just like we're sitting right now. Let me explain. Wait, wait, so wait, you're wait, saying wait. that he's a man. Wait a minute. You're saying that he's a man. The Bible said that. Okay. So you agree that's with the Bible. You're saying that he's a man, right? We're reading the Bible. And that's what the okay, Bible hold on. says. Do you agree it. with that? We're reading it. We're, the Bible is above what I think, say. But you believe do, that. Or whatever. You that's believe that. And you, you discuss <laughs> other people saying... You discuss other people your belief, so you believe that he's a man. He's a black man you or Asian what man. The Bible says, and you're being, okay. Now well, we let you speak. Now we're reading the Bible, and you just disregard that, and you just. Well, I just, I just have a question. <clears throat> but let me let so finish our point. Mm -hmm. What is your question? Let him, My let him question is this: finish our Who's point? Who's going to let him finish his point, and no. you can ask him the question. Okay. Go ahead. What is your read. point? I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, mm -hmm. whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So, the Most High God has a body, because we were created just like us, because we were created in his image, which is shows right here. He had woolly hair just like us. He had on a garment, and he's sitting. How is he sitting if he's not... Uh, if he's if he don't have a body, we okay. were created in his image. Okay. So we look like him. Meaning this: <clears throat> God has woolly hair. We have woolly hair. Uh -huh. God has black he's skin. Black. We have black he's skin. He's black. God has mm -hmm. ten fingers, ten toes, one nose, two eyes. Likewise mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. Now you, your question. Okay. What is your question? Now you can ask address your question. Uh, so you believe that he's a man? He's a black man, correct? God is the Most High God, and the Bible says He's a man of war. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible just said. It's, a, it's very you clear. Let your guest. Hold also. on, something you can come in. That's very clear. Hold on. Let's. What's okay. his name? Cypherdine. Cypherdine. Okay, Cypherdine, you can speak. Okay, brothers. You know, nice all the lobby, please. That. Part of what's going to happen here, and I've been through this before, is the real issue is witnessing of what's been, what's been revealed. Christians and, and the Jews or the, the followers of Israel, whatever you want to call it, and I'm not trying to be offensive, I'm just trying to cover everybody in that statement. They follow the Bible, and we as Muslims, we follow the Quran. We will honor other holy books, but we are not allowed to say whether they're true or not. We can just honor them because of the possibility of truth. Hmm. So the real question we're having here, all right, the background of this are the points of revelation that we both are trying to follow. And anything we want to follow, and this is the most important thing I tell people most dire. Hmm. We all agree on that, I would imagine, right? So the point I want to make is, and this is what I thought the discussion was really going to be about, was the two historical documents that are the, the cornerstones of, of the religions, of at least three religions, all right? And this is the Quran, and this is what's called the Bible, all right? 
So the, before we can follow anything, and I used to be a Christian, I was a, a Baptist, um, out of the South, my mom was from Mississippi, my dad's from Alabama. And I, what made me begin to think was the, where did the Bible come from? Hmm. That's the first point of view. Even in legal system, you have to authenticate that a law came from a, a, a real source. So that's where I thought this debate was going to, because theologically, all of this is based, you're going to stick to your positions in the Bible, and we're going to stick to our positions from the well, Quran, because this is what we believe in. But the real point of the question was, the, the, what is the intellectual source? Because we as Muslims don't believe intellect and spirituality have to go against each other. They should be one. Mm -hmm. Of this knowledge that we're discussing. So at, at that point is, as Muslims, our book, the Quran, we literally can trace it back to our prophet. We can tell you every generation, who memorized it, who wrote it, all the way back to the prophet. They can't but you do cannot do that with the Bible. No. There's a debate among biblical scholars, even when the books are more no. written. And who wrote let them? Him, let them share it. Let them get it out. But bro, you know, the thing is, hold on, hold on. We have to respect hold the rules of engagement. We did not agree to the Lord debate. He just used the word for debate twice. And I just said, well, this is not a debate. So we ain't going to respect the rules of engagement. We had okay. a, a meeting earlier, and I asked you, brother, was there going to be any questions? That was not fair to them. It is not fair to you guys. That's why we told you we didn't have them. They didn't have any questions. So we're trying to edify the community. That's what we're trying to do. We're not doing a debate okay. today. We can set that for another mm -hmm. time, and you guys can sit and have, okay. you know, write down questions or whatever. Well, this is not fair right now. I mean, uh, uh, so it's not fair to the listeners either. Brother Eddie, may, may I add? Hold on. Um, we, want, we want everyone to share how they feel. We want everyone to get out from your, how you, on your faith, on your truth, to address the truth. Because we also have to remember there are listeners who don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. And that they're trying to be educated on the beliefs. So when you speak, when everyone speaks, remember in mind, keep in mind, there are those that don't know anything about Christianity, those that don't know anything about Islam. Okay. There are those that know about Islam, those that know about Christianity. There are those that were Islam that went to Christianity. There are those that was Christi Christian that went to Islam and that are listening. So we want to make sure that we cover yeah, He wants to say everyone. something real quick before I say something. Now, he shared, Brother Saeed, right? Saifedean. But Saifedean shared his statement. Mm -hmm. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, he's, okay. He's, he's, uh, one of the things that he said was that they can they can trace back they can trace back their records to their prophet. So what I'm gonna do, give me Isaiah chapter 55 and 11 because the validity of the Bible is very factual. We don't we we're not just saying we Israelites because we just popped out of one thing something just popped in my our minds and we were like you know what I'm an Israelite. Mm -hmm. We read it in the Bible. I'm gonna show you Isaiah 55 and 11. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So it, read. it shall not return unto me void. So when you read up higher, it talks about, the, the scriptures talk about how the rain drops down from the sky and it doesn't return back up into, into the clouds. And now he's saying, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Bring it the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But... It shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, if you know anything about the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy was written to Israel. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1, mm -hmm. Moses wrote Deuteronomy to Israel. And it says, read it again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, to the Israelites, it's going to come to pass, and we're talking about something that's going to happen in the future. That if you don't listen to the voice of God, meaning keep his commandments, read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curses are bad things. Mm -hmm. Curses are going to come upon the Israelites when they broke God's commandments. They didn't do what God said to do. Jump up to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So it says, that you, that one of those curses, it says you're going to serve your enemies, which the Lord is going to send against you. Just like a father that tell his son to do something and he don't do it, he disciplines him. 
the same way with, with the Father, with the Most High God, with Israel. Because Israel is God's son, according to Exodus 4 and 22. Read. And hunger. And hunger. So when you want something to eat, you got to get some food. You got to go to who? Your enemy. When we were in slavery, well, who was feeding us? Our enemy. When we was on those slave ships, we were being fed by our enemies. Even today, we don't own, we got Walmarts, you got Jewels, you got all these big box stores. We don't own it. We go into our enemy to satisfy our hunger. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst, we want water. Water comes freely out of the ground, but we got to pay a water bill if you're living in a house. You got your water bottle companies, uh, the, the Sani, Aquafini. Ice Mountain, we got to go to our enemy to get water read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes that's on our back, we have to go to our enemies to get our clothes because we don't own the textile companies. Yeah, you may have a, a FUBU or a, a, a black owned business, but they don't own the textile companies that's producing the clothing. Read. And they want of all things. Everything that we want in this land, we have to go to our enemies to get it. We want to get married, well, we got to go to the courthouse to get a marriage license. We have children, what? We got to get a birth certificate from our enemy. Read on. And he shall and, put... And, and it says, and he. So that enemy that the Most High God is talking about here, what he do? Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. He shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed thee. What happened to us in slavery? We had yokes of iron on our necks. We had chains. We were shackled. That's history that you find in the Bible. That's where we find our facts on. One more, 68. Verse 68. And it says, and says, until he have destroyed thee. The only reason we ain't got chains on our neck today is because we are destroyed. We don't know that we are the Israelites. We're going after every other religion, but our, what's supposed, what we're supposed to be doing. Read. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. If you know anything about the Bible, Egypt, the Israelites were in Egypt. What were they doing in Egypt? They were in bondage. They were slaves. Egypt is just the Greek word meaning bondage, slavery. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Again with ships. How do we get to it? Why do we? How do we get over on, on the shores ships. of America? Car Transatlantic car Trans cargo Trans slave ships. Cargo slave ships. Yeah. And then that didn't just happen to us. The Israelites are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Hispanics that were over here before Christopher Columbus and Hernan Cortez, before they came over here, they came over here and sent them to Europe on slave ships. Sent them to Spain on slave ships. That's Bible prophecy. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland again, which is Jerusalem. You will not see it or even know it. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women. When we got off those slave ships, what, we, what, was, what happened? We got on a slave auction box mm -hmm. and they sold us for slaves. Bond men and bond women. The, us along with our women. We were sold as slaves. Read. And no man shall buy you. There's no man that was able to save us out of our condition. We had many men rise up, but none of them were still in the same conditions. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our proof that we are the Israelites. Mm -hmm. That's the Bible's proof that we are the Israelites. So my brother, you heard what he had this year. Um, yeah, it, it, brother Cypherdine, what do you want to respond to what he shared? One, one thing you have to understand that um, out of uh, Jewish, you said Jews, Christianity, and Islam, right? Jews, he said Jews. Because I, I, I want Brother Eddie and um, the radio host to know, understand that we don't, we're not shying away from any debate. So if they have questions that, that arise um, <clears throat> that may change the course of the radio show, that's fine. We can answer them. Mm -hmm. Because I want everybody to understand. Give me that um, in this page right here. Yes, Read the book. <clears throat> and um, we're going to show you historical evidence that you have to understand that yes. Islam is a baby religion. Islam is a very <laughs> new religion. Yes. Christ yes. already yes. died, resurrected. Mm -hmm. Muhammad wasn't even born until 570 A.D. Mm -hmm. And he died in 622 uh, A.D. in mm -hmm. Mecca. He was born in Medina in Saudi Arabia. We, we've thoroughly, he thoroughly was born researched in Mecca. that. He was, born he was, born he was born. not born in Mecca. He conquered Mecca. He was born in uh, Medina, Saudi Arabia, and he conquered Mecca as his capital. That's why Mecca is now the spiritual capital of the Muslims. Because that's where Muhammad conquered. He died and then his followers went further uh, west into Africa, into Morocco. Egypt, and that's why majority of Africa is Muslim today. 
Mm. All right, but Islam is a very new religion. And we we can bring we can prove no one read that. No, this is the book. Chance this is the book from Babylon to Timbuktu oh. by Rudolf R. Winzo. Over to the page. Page forty five. Mm -hmm. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun. Because in Hebrew, God is known as Allah Shaja, Allah Shaja. That's the Hebrew. El Shaddai. Okay, Yahweh, the Most High God. That's how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew him as. You understand? When uh, Muhammad was born, the Arabs were worshiping. A God for each day. The main chief God was Habu, the moon God. Mm. Habu is who you know today as Allah. Yeah. It's the same uh, idol God. Ooh. It's not the Most High God. That's in the, it's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true and living God. Read. Many Arabs were still worshiping the sun, the sun, stars, the stars, spirits, uh -huh. and idols. That's and idols. That's why you ever seen in the movie Malcolm X when um, Malcolm was praying to God and he had a vision of Elijah Muhammad. What did Elijah Muhammad have on his head? He had the, the, the moon crescent and the stars on his hat because it goes back to where Islam originated <clears throat> from. It's idolatry. You understand? Mm. That's why, uh, like the Washington Wizards, you see how uh, Mickey Mouse has the, 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 the moon crescent and the stars on his hat? The Nation of Islam wears the same thing because historically, Islam has its roots in that. And, and that's, listen, this is not any personal attack against my, my, yeah, my wonderful brother that. because God put the spirit on you to invite us. And we thank you, brother. We mm -hmm. appreciate it. So I don't want nobody to feel like this is mm -hmm. a personal thing. This is historical. Okay. 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 Hold Read it. He, okay. He's still sharing. You have your brother. You yeah, gonna have yeah, your yeah. chance to share to respond to what he's but sharing. Let me finish this up. Let, let, let me finish. The, the Arabs possessed three hundred and sixty idols, one for each day of the year. Read on. After Muhammad became a camel driver, mm -hmm. he traveled to remote and intriguing lands. Mm -hmm. He led his caravans to Persia, Syria, and Egypt. Transacting business with merchants of every kind. Jump right here, Muhammad learned. Muhammad learned that and extracted much from the Jewish religion. So understand that Muhammad got his sources from the Bible. The Jewish religion is the Bible. That's why the Quran means the recitation in Arabic. That's that's the definition of Quran, recitation. They're only reciting things that came after them. So for for, for anybody to say that oh the Quran says this and 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 try to disregard what the Bible says, it's foolishness because the Bible was written you have historically that the Jews went into captivity under Babylon 580 something BC. Abraham walked the earth before that. We're talking about a very new religion that came 600 years after the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. Even, even uh, uh, the Buddhists was walking around before that. Yes. Uh, Islam is one of the newest religions on this earth. Christianity may be newer than Islam. I'm mm -hmm. talking about modern day Christianity. So. Modern Christianity and Islam are very new religions, so we can't, you have to just be open-minded to hear what the scriptures say. The scriptures have been here since Genesis 1, since the day 1 of creation. So, okay, so there's a little more, and I'm, I'm going to let you talk, bro. I'm going to let you talk. Go ahead. Yeah. And compounded it with his new religion, Islam. You see that? His new religion, Islam. Islam mm -hmm. started with Muhammad. Muhammad was born in 570 AD, and it was prophesied that the Israelites would go into paganism and learn a new religion. It's, it's prophesied. Jeremiah 3 and 2, and I'm going to let you talk. Jeremiah 3 and 2. So you give them like five minutes. I know. We're going to have time. We're going to make sure everybody has equal time. So it's about five everybody minutes. Everybody has equal time. We have five minutes. You can give them ten minutes. Okay. Go this ahead. is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 2. Come on. Lift up thine eyes unto, high, unto the high places, mm -hmm. and see where thou hast not been lying with. Lying means sexually, because... Just like a woman commits adultery with her husband, we have committed adultery against God by following all these other religions. The high places were like the churches where we would do idol worship. Read. And the ways hast thou set for them. God said, in the ways have you set for them. Them is who? He's going to explain. Read. As the Arabian in the wilderness. So we sat down after the fall of 70 AD, and we scattered further into Africa and other parts of the world, and we ruled the Dark Ages. We learned from these Arabians. What did we learn from the Arabians under Muhammad and his followers? Read. And thou hast polluted the land mm -hmm. with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Read. Therefore the showers of the, therefore the showers have been withholding, mm -hmm. and there have been no latter rain, and thou hast a hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. God said, because of our wickedness, he said he's gonna hold back the latter rain and the former rain. Meaning what? Pestilence. Meaning what? If, if it doesn't rain, you have famine. Meaning, after we worshiped these other religions, we had nothing but hardships. The reason why we went on to, to, the, to the slave ships is because we disobeyed our God in following these different religions. God, is, I've told you, God has given us a time period for us to come back to Him 
before he destroys this place. Okay, so we have to leave all these various religions and these ideologies and come back to our true heritage, come back to our true laws, come back to our true God, who is a black man. So being Arab is no different than worshiping white Jesus. It has nothing to do with the black man. That's, right. we, that's our problem. We want to follow all these other people's religions and ideologies. What about the black man's religion? What about the black man's God? That's right. Mm -hmm. what, about, what, what about us? We always worry about somebody else. We have to come back to us. So go ahead, brother. Okay. Um, my brother and brother say, now is your time to speak and to share okay. on what has been shared. Uh, no, uh, uh, for, let, me, let, me, let me say something first, Cypher in here. First of all, you know, I asked you guys, were you part of the Hebrew Israelites? You said no, and I believe that. You know, two, this is a national, nationalistic uh, uh, religion. You know, the, uh, what he's espousing now, it's a nationalist, it's for, it meaning it's pretty much for the black man. Two, uh, uh, I am no part of the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is not even mainstream Islam. They have a portion of Islam just as though you find the five percenters and you find uh, the Moorish, uh, I forgot, the, the Moorish temple or the uh, Moorish uh, uh, Muslims. Islam, we, do, we uh, the nation of Islam believes in that the black man is God. They believe that the black man is God. The mainstream Islam that I believe in, we have, we don't believe nothing of the sort, nothing of the sort. I want to, uh, I'm getting, I hope, I'm glad I'm getting the opportunity to explain this. Nation Islam has nothing to do with mainstream Islam, because that's what you all had commented on uh, earlier when it came to uh, when you were explaining about Elijah Muhammad. They are not Muslims. They are not Muslims. Our belief, we believe that there's no God but God Himself. He's not a man. We don't know what he looks like. And that's not part of our psyche to find out what he looks like. It's, you know, he's not a man. We just know that he exists. He know that We know that he rules. He is not a man. He, in the Bible, in, I mean, in the Quran, there's some allegorical, allegorical uh, statements. I mean, he has hands. But he's not... You know what? Can, you know, we, we, when we when it says the crime, well, he shaped Adam with his hand. No, he's not a man. You know, this is an allegorical statement. You know, you know, two, uh, two. And I I, I, I should have did this to begin with. You know, this is Islam has been around since before the beginning of time. Islam has been around before the beginning of time. When I'll, and I have proof to prove this, uh, uh, when Allah created cr the creation, it submitted to him. This is, a, this is Islam. Uh, Islam is being uh, submitting completely towards the will of Allah, to the will of God. So it's been around before the beginning of Christianity, submitting to the will of God, because we know in the Big Bang Theory, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go too much on this. In the Big Bang Theory, this is what the Quran says about the Big Bang Theory. Do not the disbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were a closed up mass. Then we opened them out and we made from water every living thing. We know that every living thing has uh, water content in it. Mm -hmm. Will they not then believe? This, the, uh, the, the sky, the heavens, it's submitted to the will of Allah, submitted to the will of God. So this proves that Islam has been around before the beginning of time. And two, Abraham is the founding father of Islam. He, is, he, was a, he, he became a modern uh, theist believer, meaning believing in one God. His... His community believed in the uh, idols. They were idol worshippers. But it was Ibrahim, Abraham, who who realized that in that there was only one God, and Allah, Allah God, spoke to him. And in, it, in, that, in the Quran, it verifies that he is also the founding fathers of the mainstream uh, religion. 
Judaism, Christianity. But we as Muslim believe that something happened down down the, uh, the way where you know monotheism was thrown to the side. Monotheism believing that one God, one you can't picture of, you can't see. I'm, you know, we don't believe that Allah is the, uh, we, be, we don't believe that Allah created uh, mankind in his own image. We don't believe that. Mm -hmm. We believe that he just created creation. He created human beings. You know, here we got different nationalities, Asians, <coughs> African-Americans, Africans. We got, uh, uh, you know, uh, Europeans. So, so you saying that you're saying that he manifests himself into you know into his creation? Well, gosh dang, well, he looks like everybody then, I guess. You know, hmm. here you are, here we are, you know, here we here we are. We're pushing nationalism when Islam does not push that. Islam is not a catalyst for that to push nationalism. The black man is the first man. We don't, you know, you know that's another story. We believe that. He created human beings. He, we believe that in the verses in the Quran, it talks about he created all nationality, tribes, this, that, and the other, to get to know one another, not despise one another. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure that some, you know, from what they spoke on earlier, I'm sure maybe uh, Cypher Dean here can expound on it. I'm using, um, you know, there's a lot of proof in the Quran that talks about. This, this holy Quran being valid. It talks about things before the create when before there was creation. Sorry. It goes on and says, here go, here go, and we have built the heaven with might and we continue to expand it, expand it indeed. The heavens are, are expanding. The, the, uh, the scientists have proven this. This was written 1400, this was written now 1400 years ago. You know, this is written out 1,400 years ago. This was this existed before it was written down. We gotta get better time for you. You know, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let me let me finish. Let me finish here. Because now you get you let them talk for five minutes. You let them talk for qu quite. I'm giving you time, but you know, also you got a special guest too. Call yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, so Siphoning, he, he's gonna uh, uh, elaborate. And it talks. The Quran talks about the different stages of mankind. The different stages. You know, uh, uh, the uh, let me see. Can I pull that verse up here? Uh, but aside from him, while he's looking, can you go ahead and share? So, uh, so I, I might speak Arabic when I'm talking. If, if I say something in Arabic that you obviously wouldn't know, <laughs> right? Just say, man, speak English. All right, not because I'm a formal student of Islam. All right, and this is the kind of things I want to touch on. Is the uh, everything Michael said? Uh, you know, may, law, may God bless him for that. The main point I was trying to make earlier, and, and it could be me, because I wasn't privy to the previous conversations, was I thought the discussion was about authenticity of text and things of the sort. So the point I want to make is the Quran, in the very first chapter of Baqarah, all right? God says to us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ali Fahmin, Have al Kitab al Fihi. He said, this, this is the book in which there is no doubt, which is an incredible statement to start a book with. All right, well, it's really the second chapter of Buckler. So right off the on right at the beginning, God has put an onus on mankind. If you doubt me, check me. If you think this book, there's no doubt in it, check it. It's a, this is what anyone would do. So when you look at the history of the Quran, all right, is that from the very beginning, we know who it was revealed to. And every generation to this time, right? Like the brother mentioned, the time the Prophet of Allah, peace and blessing upon him, was born, we know this. We know so much about our Prophet and the book he brought us and his noble statements he said, they were recorded from the beginning and memorized from the beginning. So from the very first days, they memorized it because the Arabs were largely a literate group just like most of the world was at that time. And they wrote it down by the people who could write. And this has continued to this day. My best friend's son is what we call a Hafiz. He just memorized the entire Quran. There are millions of Muslims in the world who have memorized 
the entirety of the Quran. So one, before we can follow anything, we have to make sure what we're following is authentic. Now, what ma amazes me is that many people, not just the brothers we're talking to, but many other groups I've met, they express their blackness and that their black men are great, but yet the book they're reading from was translated by our slave masters. <laughs> it's written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and maybe ancient Greek, maybe. But it was not written in English, and it was usually translated from Hebrew to, to Greek, to Latin, to English. Now, anyone who knows anything about language, there's always mistakes. Things can't translate, right? We have people in our community who are from, not from our country, and they listen to us, our people talk, and it's like we're not speaking English to them. Because context plays an incredible role. We say, what's up, man? To a, a person from overseas, this can be a confusing statement. They might literally look up and say, well, well I don't know. And this has happened to me because language does not translate exactly. Any book you want to know what it really means, you have to read it in the language it was written in. Secondly, as I mentioned, we have this is called Asani, the science of chains in our religion. That we check the chains, but this guy lied. Anybody ever say he lied? Was ever caught cheating before you can narrate anything? There is no such thing in any other religion on the face of the earth. I was just reading, because I was getting ready for the discussion, about the history of the Bible. They think the oldest parchment they found goes back to 1200 before the common era. But no one can authenticate it. No one. It's never heard. If you read any biblical scholars, they'll tell you things were added in, was taken out. This is what led me, one of the things that led me out of Christianity, to be honest with you, is that how can I follow a book that I can't definitely tell you where it came from? You know, no one can. And furthermore, it's a collection, the old, the, the Torah, which were the five books of Moses, which no one, they, the, they're the oldest version we got, 1200 BC roughly, or I should say before the common era. And then you have 39 books in total, right, of the Old Testament, or what's really called the Hebrew Bible, it should be called. And then the New Testament comes with another 27. No one even can confirm for certain the four Gospels were written by the name they're attributed to. You can look this up, I'm not exaggerating. This was before the internet. I actually went into a library and read books and, and read discovered this. So this is the point I'm making. This is what I wanted to say. And I, I, I try not to be offensive because our prophet has forbidden us to be offensive. You're reading to us a book as if it's an authority that we should follow and you can't even tell me where the book came from. It's like, this is the constitution, okay, prove it. Because people do change things. Now, you can say, and it has been said, well, how do, how do you know the brand is different? First of all, in our book, our law says he will protect it. And how did he protect it? By this science I mentioned called Asani. We have chains. You just can't say what you want to say. You have to have a chain back to the prophet. So whether you disagree with our theology, I can understand that. Right? But what the point I'm making is the history of the religions are totally different. Christianity and Hebrew Hebrewism are shrouded in mystery of the path, of the past. Right? Secondly, the people you're saying are your enemy are the ones who translated and gave it to you. King James, for example, the British king, or Scottish king, I do believe. So, and thirdly, I would encourage everyone, because when you become a Muslim, they stress to you, learn Arabic. You need to read God's words in the language it was written in. It's very important to us. And I'll give you an example why. You will make mistakes. And you have to take the language as, as it was used in that time period. There's a verse in the Quran where, where Allah says, the sins will be shown. Some people make mistakes and think that the sins mean God has sins. What the verse is referring to is an ancient Arabic statement that on a hard day of battle or czars or kilts or these type of things, they would have to tie them up and put a knot between their legs so they can move around and therefore their sins will be shown. So the verse is actually stressing the heaviness of the day of judgment. So the people that time period could understand it. If you can't do that, if you can't have that type of understanding of language. You're going to make critical mistakes in anything you read, not just in a biblical thing or a religious matter, any, any book. You have to have that critical knowledge. So you're stressing that we're going to be a nationalistic religion based off a book translated by the very people you're saying are not part of your group. Okay, my brother. No.
this is what I thought the discussion was going to be on. As far as the history of Islam, if we don't have a discussion on that, I could. We openly agree that the Arabs were idol worshippers. That's half the point of the Quran. But they always had the concept of Allah, the idea of the pantheon, that there's this great creator over them, right? And then you have these lesser angel gods type things. And Hubu, as you mentioned, there were three of them. Uh, Alat and uh, uh, the third one was Lot, I think. That they were the biggest three false deities. And the prophet, being a descendant of Ismail, the son of Abraham, he was told to get these idols out of the Kaaba, which was the very first house built for the worship of God by Father Adam originally, and later by his son Abraham and Ismail. By the Cyphic, Cyphus, Cypherdine. Cypherdine, we have callers that called in. Again, our phone number is 217 359 9338. 3599338. We want to let you know that the views and opinions expressed on air are solely those of the speaker and do not necessarily represent those of WFT Champagne, Perrier Inc., Station Management, the Board of Directors, or WFT Associates. We're going to have our, um, our brothers, our soldiers, to respond to what you just shared on the authentication of what they read from, from the Bible. Can they give authentic, authentic, is it authentic? Is the word of God authentic? Can you tra can you trace it back to the author? Is it fact? Is it fiction? Is it truth? Um, and we're going to have them to respond, but we got to get to our questions. We have callers <coughs> calling in. The phone lines have been going on. And so um, our questions and, and some of the comments that they've shared with us. So, yeah, we're going to let you, uh, you guys respond to that. Uh, Real quick, for the sake of the listeners, uh, when we put this together, when Dub J gave me to go ahead, the green light to put this together, uh, he told me to base it off the uh, uh, the rules of engagement that would be set by the party that, that's going to be here. Now, if we, uh, brother, like to respond, I, I know your guys is swore that y'all come with, trust me, I know you ain't ducking from nothing, but like the word said, everything's supposed to be done in decency and in order. Absolutely. And for the sake of, I wouldn't have promoted it in a way that the callers could get, call in. We got all these callers that's calling in, and they're not getting edified that I told them they would be able to do because this was supposed to be a forum. So we got a bunch of callers that, that want, you know, have questions. And if we want to set a debate, a real one, I mean, because this is going to turn into a debate, I guess. So I'm sorry for the listeners that we, you know, we didn't promote it that way, but we won't let the brothers cook and, you know, continue doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but for, let me uh, play that up, though. We don't want to, I don't want to just leave that on the table. The, 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 the whole about the Bible. Yeah, he's going to let us speak. Okay. Us speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are going to go on that. I'm just. Uh, we'll leave it alone after that. Okay, no problem, no problem. <laughs> However, you want to do it. But um, one caller, if I can go ahead and just interject this one. One caller wanted to, uh, for you, brother uh, Michael, to uh, explain. Um, Sirach two and four, uh, forty-seven. Sirach uh -huh. two, two and forty-seven. Two forty-seven. Sirach two. Sirach two. Sirach two forty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you explain that? And then you I, ask the whole I don't have. Um, hopefully, uh, Cyprian can do that. I don't have the the Quran right in front of me. That's Sirach two, uh, ayat forty-seven. Sirach meaning, yeah, huh? Could you expound on that? A caller. A caller called in and want to uh, someone to explain one of us to explain what it's saying there. Uh, chapter is chapter two, but in in the Arabic we say surah, meaning that's a sign. Uh, the ayat, the verse is verse uh, forty-seven. Do you look up the verse? Well, Unfortunately, well, I am not a half a half is the Quran. I memorized. I have not memorized the entire the Quran, so give me a second. Okay. And I will, my, my comments will be limited because uh, so can, we are discouraged from giving our own explanation of things. Uh, I had a verse. So this verse is in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, the, the chapter of the cow is mentioned. And it says, uh, O oh, children of Israel, Ya Bani Israel, Ufuru ni'matillati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadaktu kum alam O oh, children of Israel, remember all the favors I granted you, and how I honored you above the others. And I, this is a good, this is a good words, and I, I hint, I get the hint where the caller is going to. There is a misconception about Islam, as Michael hinted to. We don't consider ourselves a new religion. Islam, the submission of God, the saying that there is only one God, goes back to our father Adam. He only worshipped one God, but every time. Over time, the shayateen, the devil, comes and he convinces people to worship more than one God in one form or another. 
Because why? If you look at what's in your book, the Ten Commandments, the first three commandments are regarding this. And what's the greatest commandment in your book is your Lord God is one. So the devil knows the one thing that God is not ever going to forgive you for is if you die on believing in more than one God in any form or fashion. So it's the number one thing he calls us to. So over and over again, this happened. We consider ourselves, or our prophet considered himself, what's called the Khatam al-Anbiya, that he was the seal of the prophets. He was the last one, and he verified what all the prophets brought before him. This is what we believe, what our prophet told us, and what we hold dear in our heart. So we don't consider ourselves anything new, but rather a continuation of this same message. So, of course, when you read the Qur'an, there are stories of the children of Israel and their prophets, and there are stories of prophets that you guys have no idea of. Prophets like Shraib and Saali and Hud. These names are not known to the world, but they're known, they were known to the Arabs that were sent to them to guide them. So what this ayah, this verse is saying is chastising the children of Israel. It's saying, remember how I favored you over everybody else, but what was the favor? The favor was he sent to them because of Abraham. Prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. He did this for no other ethnicity, tribe, or anything. Only the children of Israel got this. This is the only real favor because Allah doesn't care about this world. The dun- the, what we call the dunya, the, the, the frivolous things of this world. But he cares about righteousness. No other people got this honor, and he chose them because of Abraham. All right, so because Abraham was not a Jew, he was not an Israelite, right? Neither was Noah, Enoch, any of them. They were not Israelites. <coughs> they were the fathers of the Israelites. <coughs> so this is because people think that Islam rejects all these prophets. No, in actuality, we're supposed to even say, "May Allah be pleased, may may the peace of God be upon them." When we mention their names, mm-hmm. we honor them so much so. That during the time of our, of, our, of our master Ali, when he was the leader of the Muslims, there was an incident where a Muslim repeated one of the stories from the Bible, saying that David did something that was... By the Cyphers? Mm-hmm. By the Cyphers? Backbeat. By the Cyphers? Sorry. Okay, they want to respond. We want to give um, just... our brothers a chance to respond to what you shared because they have information and they want to share it there from the, uh, the question or the statement that you had shared um, to they want to give some clarification on that because this is their, this is their stance. Go ahead, my brothers. All right, give me, read that. This is the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. Prove all things. So the Bible says yeah. prove all things. <clears throat> when you're asked a question, all of us here, we have our, we believe the Bible and we have our Bible. Mm-hmm. So we, what, we, what we're saying, we're proving it out of the Bible and with historical facts as a reference. You get asked the question, you don't even have your Quran. How are you proving things? How are you proving that you believe in the Quran, but you don't have a Quran? A question is asked about a verse in the Quran and you don't have it. Prove all things. Where are your facts? Not something that you prove. Which he just it. exploded no, on that. No, he all time. had 20 minutes. Yeah. Over yeah. 20 minutes. Now, real, now, real quick, real quick. Um, he said something three times. I counted it. He said that the Bible was, uh, what did you say? He said translated by the slave master. No, that's, what, that's, he, what, he said, what he said, what he said, what he said is, what he said is, that we know, no, don't uh, no, let me say, explain to what he said. No, don't explain. This is what I understand what he said. He said it three times. He said, why would we believe in something that our slave master translated? That's a grave mistake. During the fall of 70 AD, Okay, from 193 A.D. to 1453 A.D., black men, the Israelites, we ruled the world. You understand that? And even thereafter, we began to fall in 1453 A.D. So in 611, King James was a black man. Okay. Shakespeare was a black man. Yes, 1611. I'm going to say it again. During the time of 1611 and even thereafter. We still was ruling various parts of Europe. And he's laughing. He said, ha, ha, ha. Okay, but look. We have a book called The Rise of Russia. See, this is what the one thing about the Israelites. We show and prove. That's so let's see if we keep right. laughing. So this is the view of early Russia. These are the cities that we built. St. Petersburg, um, Archangel, Moscow, Kiev. Um, the list goes on and on, all right? We destroyed Kazan. 
So this is Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible, it says in 1547, no doubt was a great, okay? He was a great ruler in Russia. What color is this man right here? What color is that man? I really can't tell. That gr that's gray. What color is he? I don't know. That's a black man. Mm -hmm. We rode the Dark Ages. Was he laughing? Oh, this is funny, right? We rode the Dark Ages during uh, the Middle Ages? That's right. right. Come on, man. That's why Islam, y'all have to sit down and you have to relearn it. Okay? So this is the Kremlin. This is a very, very famous church in Russia. We, mm -hmm. we painted our images as proof that we rode Europe. Uh, Judah, go ahead and read this for me, please. And show them, show them that beautiful image of the, of, of the black images that we left. Not just in Russia. We left them in England. We left them in Greece. Romania. We left them in Navarone in Romania. Okay. We, we built the Kremlin. That uh, Who's the sitting president right now? Uh, Putin. Yeah. That he goes to yearly because all the, the, um, the, the, the czars of Russia, that's where they went to. Now go ahead and read that paragraph. Again, this is the rise of Russia. Mm -hmm. Testaments to piety. Okay. Throughout the invasions and princely rivalries that tore Russia, the church and the faith it propagated kept the people together. Okay. As testaments to, to this fierce piety, mm -hmm. more than a dozen churches stood within the Kremlin walls. You see that? The Kremlin walls. Everybody knows the Kremlin is one of the most famous churches in Russia. Kola, get this, get this on camera, my brother. Come on. The most important was the Cathedral of the Assumption, mm -hmm. erected in 1326. So this is 1326. We still was ruling the earth. And rebuilt in 1479. And it was rebuilt in 1479. That's only in Russia. We ruled uh, vast lands later, historically. Read. Here <coughs> and I say we, I mean black men, the Israelites. Read. Here in Russia's equivalent of, Westmin of Westminster, mm -hmm. Abbey, czars were crowned and patriarchs and metropolitans. The czar is Russian for Caesar because when the Byzantine Empire fell in 1453, many of its inhabitants moved to Russia and we knew that we ruled the Byzantine Empire. That's why um, uh, Alexander, uh, I'm talking about uh, Ivan the Terrible, he called himself a czar, meaning Caesar. Because we knew that, okay, the capital in Byzantine in Constantinople fell. We're gonna move our capital and we're gonna make Moscow our capital. That's what Ivan the Terrible tried to do, all right? So many of the inhabitants of the, of the, of the Byzantine Empire, we moved to Russia, and guess what, brother? We moved to England. That's why you ever heard of Moors, Black Moors? You ever heard that historically? They were Muslims. No, they were, not only they were they Muslims, oh yes, that's right. We they did went go, into France, Lord listen, listen, France, listen. they went into You have 20 minutes, let me explain. They were, is, they, they kept God's laws, meaning they were Jews, Christians, and yes, some were Islam. Some did get conquered by Muhammad's no, people. No, they, put, they, okay. they ruled in Spain. The Muslims so ruled now, in real. Spain. Sars were crowned and patriarchs and metropolitans they didn't rule alone. were buried. We with them. Here among tears of icon saints uh -huh. and angels, light blazed from the precious stones and pillars overlaid with gold. The first warriors and bishops to stand amidst this medieval magnificence exclaimed. Okay, so that's enough of that. But look at the image, brother. This is the son of God painted on the Kremlin. What color is he? Uh, from what I can black. Tell these, these were black men ruling Europe. Now let's see what we did in Europe. Were we just idle? Were we just there? No, read that. What, we, what did we do? We translated our books. This is the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Bible, King James Version. When Elizabeth died in 1603. A black woman, 1603. The crown passed to James the first, mm -hmm. who had been king of Scotland for 37 years Agreed. as James the sixth. Mm -hmm. Several months after he ascended the throne of England, he authorized a new translation of the Bible. So he said the Bible was translated by slave masters. King James, all he did was authorize, meaning he was in the power to authorize, meaning he put the authority on the translation of the Bible. He didn't sit down and translate it. He said, OK, I'm the king. Y'all want to translate the Bible? Go ahead. That's all he did. Read. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day. These were black men. I've already proven that we ruled Europe well into the Dark Ages. I've already proven that. Okay? Well into the uh, 1800s, actually. Peter the Great died, what, 1725? So we ruled Europe well, well into the 1700s. Almost 1800s, brother. And it's sad that we don't know that. Come on. Of the day were divided into six groups. Uh -huh. Three for the Old Testament. So three... Uh, scholars divided, they translated the Old Testament. Two for the New. 
two for the new. And one for the Apocrypha. One for the Apocrypha, because he said it was, uh, he didn't say 66 books in the Old Testament. He said 27 in the New Testament, and he forgot. He, he forgot the 14 books of the Apocrypha. So you you brothers, y'all y'all are unlearned. All right, read. And the Apocrypha. You see, that's, that's what you left out, my brother. You left out the Apocrypha. You didn't add those 14 books in the Old Testament. Two of the groups met but at Oxford. Don't worry, God brought us here to educate y'all. Come on. Two of the groups met at Oxford. Okay, so that's one city. Two at Cambridge. They went to another city. And two at Westminster. And then a third city. So they were not next to each other when they translated the Bible. Why? So that it can be authenticated, like he said. All right. So there was no, there was no BS when it came to the to translation of this Bible. And anyway, when you read Genesis 11, that uh, the Father and the angels in Christ. They created the different language anyway. So the white there is no white man language. The angels created all the languages on the earth. Those were black men anyway. So you saying the angels created? When you read Genesis Why not 11, God? when you read Genesis 11, when it says, "Let us come down and confound the languages," that us was God the Father, God the Son, and the angels with them. They tra they confused the languages, and all the languages that's on the face of this earth right now, God ordained them. God is a black man. The angels are black men. The sun is black men. All right. I know we have we have we have the thing is this we have very low self esteem. So when we hit anything black, <laughs> we get the we get the you know what I mean like kids. Yes, just don't go ahead and finish that up. Is that it on yeah, that? That's it on that. So did you want to um, um, say yeah, something else? Yeah. yeah. Give me a uh, First Corinthians fourteen and forty. Hold on. So first Corinthians fourteen and forty. Found in those terms. This mm -hmm. is the book because one thing we hear we let y'all go we let y'all talk for about twenty five minutes. Without interrupt, mm -hmm. we're talking. We're bringing out facts, facts, historical facts, proof, visible proof that you can look at, taste, touch, see with your hands, your eyes. Sense. And y'all spoke for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I can see on the phone as I'm talking. My brother just talking. He's just talking. Read what you got. This is the book of First Corinthians, okay. chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done. Decently and in order. Let all things done be done decently and in order. You have your time to talk. You let the you let the next man talk. You don't cut us off in the, in the middle of our speech. That's disrespectful. That's very disrespectful. Now go to Isaiah chapter thirty-four and sixteen because all of these all of these words are saying said saying that you can't prove the validity of the Bible. You can't. We just proved that. The things that happened to us, we went to slavery on slave ships, mm -hmm. we were taken into captivity, it's in the Bible. That validifies the Bible mm -hmm. right there, all in itself. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The book of the Lord is the Holy Bible. The Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Seek ye out of the Lord, book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None of the prophecies that's written in the Bible will fail. When you see, when you read the prophecies about the Israelites, you're going to see them on the Israelites today. Read. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. There's no other book on this planet that mates with the Bible, that even come close to comparing in comparison with the Bible. That's right. Because the Bible shows us what happened to the children of Israel. Give me Zechariah 11 and 5 because we just brought out what happened to us in, in slavery and things like that. The common thing that's going on, we see all we see day in and day out. And it's coming more prevalent today. What we're seeing, our young men being shot down in the streets. Why is that happening to us? Get that in Zechariah chapter 11 and 5. No, we just read, nothing in this Bible shall fail. Everything that was written is going to happen. Read. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Whose possessors slay them. So it says, whose possessors slay them. We all know that the Old Testament, the prophecies, is talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. So whose possessors, they're saying, the, the people that's possessing the Israelites, what did it say they do? Whose possessors slay them. They possessors slay them. And what, what happened after they slay them? And hold themselves not guilty. And hold themselves not guilty. So our whole purpose and outline is for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to see that they are the Israelites. That's, That's right. why we are on here. That's why our voice goes out into the airways. Because we want to show you that the Bible is your book. Your book. It says, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. What, you got back, big day back to what, 2016? Right. Mike Brown got shot down in the street. Mm -hmm. What happened to the cop? They go on, they go on administrative leave. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laquan McDonald got shot. What happened? Got off. 
they hold themselves not guilty. George Floyd. George Floyd. In Minneapolis, yeah. In Minneapolis, what happened? He was killed. Some choked to death. What happened? The the, the cop guy, I think he, he bail bonded out. Released. They they had a fundraise. We were talking about the Bible. They had a fundraise. He's going in politics. No, this, I'm not going in politics. I'm going into yeah. the Bible. That's no. prophecy. Read it again. Whose possessors slay them? Listen, read it. Bro. Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors slay them? That's the Bible. Read it again. Call it and read it. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 5. You want to know authenticity of the Bible? You have to read the prophecies and see what's going on today. <clears throat> Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors slay them? Who's possessing us today? Who who's oppressing us today? <clears throat> Our enemies, the so-called white man. That's Bible. That's the Bible. Where is your proof out of the Quran mm -hmm. that shows us who we are and what we must do? Because all I've seen and heard today was words on the page. Not even words on the page, words from your brain. No, he has quoted words the Quran. Quoted. I've quoted, quoted the Quran. We're reading the Bible. I've quoted the Quran. You're quoting Wait, I and read. reading all documents that you printed from the internet. Right. We yeah. are, you have These our are verses from the Quran. Read that again. Yeah. Hey, don't, say that. Hey, slay them don't say that. And hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them <laughs> say, Blessed be the Lord. For I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. So they shoot I, down in the I streets. Have, they shoot I have down quoted the from the Quran. Only after he I, have quote, I have read from the Quran, okay. the verses from the Quran, and so has uh, Brian, uh, Syphonim. So don't say that we have it. This is the information I gave you is from the Quran. These so, are the verses so right here. So I ask you a question? You, you, you believe in the Quran, correct? Yes. Why don't you have it with you? I do have it with me. It's on. It's on my phone. You you believe in the Quran, correct? Yes. Why don't you have it with you? I do have it with me. It's on. It's on my phone. Hopefully, uh, Cyberdean can do that. I don't have the the Quran right in front of me. Hopefully, uh, Cyberdean can do that. I don't have the the Quran right in front of me. You you believe in the Quran, correct? Yes. Why don't you have it with you? I do have it with me. It's on. It's on my phone. It's on, I have a Bible on my yeah. phone too. Yeah, I, I have no Bible. yeah, but this makes it to maneuver so, to maneuver, maneuver to maneuver more uh, uh, let quickly. Me, let me say it this. is on my phone, and I'm not gonna go to my phone because I don't want to disconnect him from my the phone. Somebody asked a question you had something. about Surah two and forty seven. He he, he elaborated on scrambling it. like. He elaborated. He came. He head? wrote the Arabic. He he recited the Arabic from the Quran, and then he explained it in English, and he elaborated think, on it. I think what he's saying is that we was invited to a forum to uh, edify on the Bible. Y'all switched it up on us and turned it to a debate. And then on top of the to add insult to injury, you don't even have your Quran with you for a debate. And you it you is on my phone. And, and on top of that, you weren't quoting anything until Brother Eddie, the host, kept asking you, "Please bring your sources." Then you brought your huh. sources. So it's almost like, just, we, we're going to just, uh, what, 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 do we have any more questions? What, do we have any callers? Uh, um, anybody want to be edified? Hope before we, because we're coming up to the top of the hour, we do have a, his guest, the guest that was coming with him. We want him to share. Uh, we let, only, let me, let me, let me we say something, then he can talk. Okay, yeah. let me say something, then let, let him talk. Okay? All right. Minutes, just, All right. All right. All right. I am just want to reiterate, we, I am reading from the verse of the Quran. I have the Quran, two Qurans as a matter of fact, the same kind, on my phone. I am not just pulling things out of the air. I want everyone to know that. I am not doing that. I'm coming, I quote, he, Cypherdeen has quoted, has spoke the Arabia, the, the, ver, the ayah in the Quran. He has he had translated in English and he had, he uh, also elaborated on that. So I'm not just you know I'm not coming from my own my own my own thinking. All right, I just want to say this, you know, the we we as Muslims we believe that there is some inaccuracies of the Bible, and the history has shown that the Nicene Council, for one thing, we know that the Bible, the uh, the Old Testament, the New Testament. There are more Gospels than that, what we see there. It was the Nicene Council, the Emperor Constantine, and, and, and another, uh, other people who made sure that what you have now, that's what they were going by. They, this is what we're going to go by. The 
the uh, topic of uh, believing that there's one God, that was one issue that was brought up in the Nicene Council. What are we going to believe in? Are we going to believe in one God or are we going to believe in the Trinity? The Nicene Council determined that because it, at the time there was chaos going on with that. We know this. It's the Council of Nicene. Right, right, right now, let me finish. No, no, don't interrupt me. So, okay. And also, also, you don't have the original Bible. It was not dictated in Hebrew. It was dictated in Greek. Can I ask you one question? You know, no, 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 you may not. No, you do it later. <laughs> Listen, but they don't, hold on, they don't have the original Bible to do the checks and balances. We have our Holy Quran. It's in Turkey right now yeah, to do the checks and balances. But what God, what, what God said, what God said, let me finish, let me finish. No, let me finish. You don't have it. You don't have any even in Hebrew. You got to give your. Let me let me say let me say this. Let me say this. But they Cyphers, have, they, they, go ahead and share. We got brother Cyphers because you are calling from another state. Go ahead and share. We, we and right. remember we only have and, a few minutes, and then we got to give our guests that are here a chance to share before I have to close out. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I will say this. It's the point. I thought the point of this, and I could have been wrong, like I mentioned. I thought the point of this forum or discussion or whatever it was, was discussing the, about the authentic, authenticity of the Bible and the authenticity of the Quran. Um, obviously, we have theological differences because we wouldn't be different religions if we did. Mm -hmm. Everyone can agree on that, right? So, yes. here to, to, to argue with brothers on this, our position on the nationalistic point, our prophet told us the Arab is not better than the non Arab. And the white is not better than the black. Only your righteousness, your good deeds, and what you believe matter to God. That's our position. Anyone who believes in that, you, you believe in it. If you don't believe in that, you don't believe in it. I'm not here really to attack anyone. Of course, I would defend my religion. But facts are facts, all right? As they mentioned, I would like to know who the author is of this book they're reading from and what's his pedigree. Where did he study? Who are his teachers? These type of things. As far as photographs and pictures, as I mentioned, when you draw something, you can draw something however you want. So most draw things are not really credible in, in scientific communities because you can draw whatever you want to draw. You can't say, I drew this, this is what this is. That's not a scientific approach to explaining things. Uh, whether we rule, honestly, from the Muslim perspective, whether we rule on this earth or not, is almost irrelevant, irrelevant except for the protection of the right to worship God. That's it. If it doesn't do that, whether we rule or not is useless. Use what was the point of discussion after a point, man, after a period of time. I answered the, the verse the, the, the person asked about. I recited it in the original Arabic and explained it. So I, I would think there would be another question. Um, from yeah. the from the from the from the listeners. That's kind of where I'm at with. I'm here to explain anything about Islam. Theological debates, I don't really see much use in them because they're going to say what they're going to say on and I'm going to say what I'm going to say on unless something is mentioned mm -hmm. that proves the point. So now, that's kind of where I'm at. Real quick, when, when, the, when the caller had asked him about uh, Surah 240, 247. when he read it, 247, when he read it in Arabic and then when he read it in English, did it say the same thing? Yes or no? Did you hear that, Saifedean? Did you hear that, Saifedean? I, I didn't hear it, I'm sorry. I'm going to say it again. When the, when the caller called in and asked you about Surah, the second chapter, and then you read it in Arabic, and then you also read it in English, did it say the same thing, yes or no? Yeah, it says pretty much the same thing, close. So likewise with the Bible. Whether it's Hebrew, Greek, Latin, it's the same, the same thing. No, it's not. That's what the translation is. It missed. But hold on, so the Quran is saying the same thing, but not the Bible? No, it, that's, it, that's it, no, the no, it is true that when you translate, you do miss some of the essence of it. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing on that. Uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. But I, 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 I just, I just like to say that I just got three minutes. Okay. I just minutes. like, I just like to say they, do, they right. do not have the original Bible. Deuteronomy the Bible was. This is the was, book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter one, verse one. Come on. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses spoke Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Moses wrote the first five books. I agree Give with me that. Joshua, I, one I one. agree with that. Moses, a black man, may I add, he wrote the first five books, Joshua 1, 
The book of Joshua. To believe in it is one no, thing. We're talking about Joshua 1 and 1. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible's speaking. Now, if he comes from text, I'll be quiet and listen. But we coming from text. This is no longer man speaking. So he, it's very rude for him to talk over God. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do to them, even to the children of Israel. So the book of Joshua was documented by the time of, of Joshua. God was speaking to Joshua. He was dealing with Joshua after the death of Moses. Song of Solomon 1 and 1. Because the, the, what, what are we doing with Edward Sean, who wrote the Bible? The black men, the forefathers wrote the Bible. The prophets who were black men who God used for various reasons at various oh, times exactly. wrote the Bible. Read what you got for the, the Book song of, of Solomon 1 and 1. The Song of Solomon. The Songs of Songs, which is Solomon. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon, and he wrote Proverbs, and he wrote Ecclesiastes, and he wrote Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. Jump to verse 5. Let's see what he said when he wrote that. Prove it. Verse prove 5. It. Prove okay. it. I am black. Verse prove one. it. Let's prove it. Verse prove 1. It. Prove it. The Song of Songs. Please don't interrupt. He's yet God is speaking. Prove it. He God is not prove it. Read. The Song of Songs. Which is Solomon. It's Solomon. Nope. That's the proof. the proof. Verse 5. Verse 5. I am black. King Solomon said he's black. Mm -hmm. He's a black man. Read. But comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. So King Solomon wrote, I'm saying it again, he wrote Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, and he wrote Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon. Okay. Give me Isaiah 8 and 20. Well, I think we like that part two. Part Isaiah 8. We can go all day. Well, Isaiah 8 and 20. You read the book, but he can't prove it. The book of Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah 30 and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Stay with me. Come on. Now, go. Write it before them in a table uh -huh. and note it in a book. So Isaiah wrote the Bible. Moses wrote the Bible. Joshua wrote the Bible. King Solomon wrote the Bible. That what? That it may be for the, for the, time, for the time to come. Likewise in Isaiah's time, likewise in this time. Read. Forever and ever. Uh -huh. That this is a rebellious people. We understand that our people are rebellious. No matter how much proof we bring out, they don't want. They're going to hold on to their religion. And that's mm -hmm. fine. If you want to, brother, we're not, we're not trying to convert you. I want you to understand that. No, no we ain't trying. We, we, we're not trying to convert you. All right. We know God already said that our people are rebellious. But we know that when we come on this radio show that we can reach others. We're not trying to reach you, too. He still has yet. Three. Lying oh, children. You see that they're lying children. They say when the Bible comes out, they say that the Bible is not saying what it's saying. <laughs> we read it from the text. Now, Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk 2 and 2. We're almost done. I promise we're almost done. Habakkuk 2 and 2. It goes on and says this. <laughs> come on. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh-huh. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. So Habakkuk wrote the vision. He wrote the Bible. Read. And make it plain upon tables. And make it plain upon tables. That so we go, we showing you in the Bible that Moses wrote the Bible, King Solomon wrote the Bible, <coughs> Joshua wrote the Bible, Isaiah wrote the Bible, New Testament Habakkuk too. wrote the Bible. New Testament also. Paul wrote most on, of the books of the New Testament. Uh, these are black men. Let me be a black oh, man. I got the, mm. All right. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna let you in, brother. Oh, yeah, we got. We're coming up to the top of the hour. We got a next show. We have to respect the next show that comes on exactly at at eleven o'clock. But I want to thank you, brothers. This kind of show is so many levels and layers. But coming out of it, I know now what the subject matter needs to be. And the the authentication and authenticity of the Bible and of the of the Quran. Thank you callers who called in. Our last caller shared some questions he want to ask you brothers. Okay. But it needs to be a part two, a part three on this. When Maybe thank a part you. four. And because of that, the subject matter on the next dialogue, I want to say dialogue, some people call it, sometimes when you're sharing how you're feeling, people can, can perceive it as being debate. No, you're just standing or sharing on your belief. But also when you're sharing your belief, Please have your 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 either your Quran or the Bible to share on the scriptures, and then also more than to share exactly on the author of the Quran and of the the Bible, which callers have shared and last callers asked to share, talking about the authors of the Bible. Is the Bible accurate? Is it authentic? Is the Quran accurate? Is it authentic? I think that's where we can start our next. Remember, there's levels to this. You're not going to cover everything in one conversation. And I see now we need more than just two hours on this one. But 
remember, we have to start on a basis and respect each and everyone's perspective and give them time to share. Again, thank you, WFT 90.1 FM. We'll see. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.